everybody awake? Because I kind of not. So <laughs> we have a lot of people out sick today. So uh, be praying for for sickness. We have people on vacation. So be praying for travel and everything like that. But let's stand, and I want to welcome you here to the journey, and let's worship together this morning. <laughs> Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you, we turn to you, hope is stirring, hearts are yearning, In your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna. Hosanna, come have your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus, and hear the sound of hearts returning to you, we turn to you. in your kingdom broken lives are made new you make us new cause when we see you we find strength to face a day and in your presence all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Hosanna. Hosanna. You are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praises. Hosanna. Hosanna. Come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hosanna. Hosanna. You are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praises. Hosanna. Hosanna, come have your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Father God, we do praise you, we welcome you to this place, Father God. I pray that as we're in your presence, Father God, that we would continue to worship you that with all that we are, Lord, and we will give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In your name we pray, amen. Just have some announcements for you this morning, quite a few, so take a seat, gather yourself. Uh, first, this is uh, Karen uh, Wheeler told me about this, is a world premiere movie event called Casting Stones, and the movie is based on a book written by local Arthur K. Hall, uh, and it's on healing after abortion, and it's going to be January 21st at the AMC Theaters. You're going to meet, at, there's, there's a meet and greet at 3.30, and then the movie's at 4. Um, 
that's information I have. I did talk to Karen and any information more that you would need, uh, talk to Karen Wheeler back here and she'd be happy to fill you in on even more of that, uh, of what's going on. Uh, we have a Bible study still here, I believe, Wednesday mornings, um, and that's at 10, 10 o'clock, I believe, and Mary Cor is doing that. Are we still on the book of Ruth in that? Yes. One more in the book of Ruth? Okay. So this, this coming Wednesday uh, at, at 10 a.m., uh, come, come for that. Uh, Gather and Pray, I believe, is on for next week, and that's going to be Thursday morning at 10, uh, and we're going to meet and we're going to pray for the church, for the journey, for the, for the world, and uh, I continue to just have us fall on our faces before God and allow that to happen. Young Adults is Tuesdays at 7, uh, and that's with uh, Pastor Nate. I know that that's been going well. And any visitors, I mean, we're talking to some people online today, too, because uh, we have a lot of sickness. So uh, any visitors that you have that we have here, which, you know, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, there's a card in the seat in front of you. Take that, fill it out, and uh, turn that into the back booth at iConnect. If you're online, you can go to our website, tcjourney.org. Um, and fill out a connection card there to be able to uh, connect with us. So uh, I hope that you had a Merry Christmas. It was a bummer that we couldn't have the, the uh, Christmas Eve service. I was really looking forward to it. But uh, we just felt that with uh, the snow and everything, uh, I had to drive to my parents on Saturday morning. It was nasty. So uh, we, I, I pray that uh, you had a great Christmas season, a happy new year, and uh just look forward to what God has in store for us. So uh, we continue to pray. We continue to press on. We can continue to put, put God first and allow him to work. So let's, uh, I hate to do this to you again, but let's stand again and let's continue to sing. <laughs> you are good. You are good. When there's nothing good in me, you are love. You are love on display for all to see. You are light, you are light when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope. You have covered all my sin. You are peace, you are peace. When my fear is crippling You are true, you are true Even in my wandering You are joy, you are joy You're the reason that I sing You are life, you are life In you death has lost its sting I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms, the riches of your love will always be enough, and nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever. You are more, you are more than my words will ever say. You are Lord, you are Lord, all creation will proclaim. You are here, you are here, in your presence I'm made whole. You are God, you are God, of all else I'm letting go. And oh, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever.
my heart will sing no other name Jesus Jesus my heart will sing no other name Jesus Jesus my heart will sing no other name Jesus Jesus my heart will sing no other name Jesus Jesus and oh I'm running to your arms I'm running to your arms the riches of your love will always be enough and nothing compares to your embrace light of the world forever rain sing it one more time to him and oh i'm running to your arms i'm running to your arms the riches of your love will always be enough and nothing compares to your embrace light of the world forever just wanted to take a couple minutes we got a text from Bill McCulley this morning saying that they were taking Gilead into uh, Munson and having trouble breathing. So I want to take a couple minutes. I want to pray over baby Gilead right now and take this time during during our worship time that, that we can just lay our hands out, open them up, and allow God to work. Lord, we pray right now for baby Gilead that you would just heal him in this moment, that we, the, the McCulley family, would feel your presence, Father God, that they will, as we know they do glorify your name. I pray that you just touch wherever it is that needs to be healed, Father God, and allow that healing to take place. I pray that we would trust you in this, that we would allow you to work in this, Father God. Babies are so precious. New life. The world is cruel. Sin is cruel. Father, I pray that you would heal baby Gilead right now. You have no more issues. And that your name would be glorified, honored, and praised. We pray this in your precious holy name. Amen. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life I won't turn back, I know you are near And I will fear no evil For my God is with And if my God is with me, whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? And oh, no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh, no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh, no, you never let go, Lord. You never let go of me. And I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. A glorious light beyond all compare. 
there will be an end to these troubles but until that day comes we'll live to know you here on the earth and i will fear no evil for my god is with me and if my god is with me whom then shall i fear whom then shall i fear and oh no you never let go through the calm and through the storm oh no you never let go in every high and every low oh no you never let go lord you never let go of me yes i can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on and there will be an end to these troubles but until that day comes Still I will praise you, still I will praise you. Yes, I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. And there will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, Still I will praise you, still I will praise you. And oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord. You never let go of me. Singing, oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord. You never let go of me. Sing it one more time, I'll come. Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go in every high and every low oh no you never let go lord you never let go of me good morning happy new year to everybody let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and finish our worship service and we're going to go ahead before our Lord and pray. So will you guys please join me in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, again, we are just so, so blessed, such a blessed people to come into your house and worship your holy name. Again, you are so worthy of our praise. And as we are finishing up an old year coming into a new year, Lord, I pray, I pray that we seek you with everything that we are and everything that we have, that we put you first. Lord, I know in the midst of change, in the midst of struggles, in the midst of pain, it's hard. It's hard to see the goodness, the good that is of it, but you are good, and you are so faithful. You never leave us as we just got done singing. You never let us go. You walk right beside us. You see ahead and you're preparing the way. So Lord, I pray that we just continue to trust you in your hand and what you have for each and every one of us. Lord, I pray for those that are not with us today. 
whether they're sick, whether they're traveling. Lord, I just pray that your hand is upon them, that they can feel your presence, that they can feel you there. I pray that if it is a sickness, that your healing hand is upon them. You are the ultimate physician. We continue to lift and pray little Gilead and the Macaulay family up to you. I pray that you are with the doctors, that you are with the nursing staff, that you are with those that are in his care, that your hand is upon that and that his body will be healed in Jesus' name. When we call upon your name, Lord, I know that it will be done. Lord, I pray for this service, for the remaining of this service, Lord, that again, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. And Lord, I just pray that the Holy Spirit will be able to touch those that are here listening online and that your word speaks to their hearts and a transformation is take place. You are so worthy. We love you in this place. We pray all of this in your precious and holy name. Amen. Kids, if you want to go back, um, Mr. Chuck will be taking you guys um, for kids. It's good to be with you this morning. Happy New Year to each of you. We trust you've been blessed already in this new year. At least we're able to come together for worship. <clears throat> Today we're beginning a new series of messages for January. We're calling it Faith for the Journey. Faith for the Journey. And as we begin the new year, we want to uh, focus on strengthening our faith as individuals and as a church. And so uh, we'd like to just encourage you to be alert to how God wants to work in your life today to strengthen your faith as you go through the year of 2023. We'd like to read to you this morning from Matthew, or from the book of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 through 44. Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 through 44. And they read like this. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming, and going that they did not even have a chance to eat. And he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place, and let's get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place, but many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. By this time, it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him and said, uh, this is a remote place, and it's already very late. Let's, uh, let's send the people away so they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. And he answered them, you give them something to eat. They said to him, that would take eight months of, of a man's wages. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? How many loaves do you have, he asked. Go and see. When they found out, they said uh, five, uh, five loaves and, and two fish. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the grass. So they sat down in groups of a hundred and fifty. Taking the five loaves and two fish, looking up to heaven, 
he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. The disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of men who had eaten that day was 5,000. Shall we pray? Father, open our hearts, our minds, our lives to your word and to your Holy Spirit. That by your word and by your spirit, we may be alert to what you want to say to us about living this life of faith in the coming year. Anoint this preacher, for I cannot speak except by your Holy Spirit enablement. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So we'd like to share with you the message this morning, preparing for the journey. We're talking about uh, faith for the journey. Well, we would like to talk about preparing for the journey. Have you ever taken a trip but maybe made the wrong turn and found yourself lost? Some years ago, I read a book which was really impacted my life and my thoughts, and it's called... Uh, the path for going forward. And in it, it talks about the fact that your direction determines your destiny. Your direction determines your destination. And so I began thinking about that. Let's imagine for a moment we are going to go to Florida. So we get on I-75 and are heading south, and uh, we get to I-94, which is an expressway be between Detroit and Chicago. And we get tired of going south, so we turn right and head west on sh to, to Chicago. Do you know if we continue that route, that direction, what will happen? we will never get to our destination, Florida. Is that right? Amen? Right? And that's what we need to be thinking about. What is the direction of our life? Where are we going and how are we getting there? Maybe you've uh, used those GPSs for travel. I remember one of the first times I used it. I was down in Florida to a pastor's meeting and uh, this GPS, I, I had rented, I had flown down and rented a car and that had a GPS and I was using it to get to Orlando from Sanford, Florida. Well, the GPS led me astray. I ended up on a dead end street looking at a lake. It didn't look like Orlando to me. A couple days ago, my wife and I met with our daughter Amy and her, her husband and uh, her da their daughter Olivia and her uh, fiance were coming to see their new house and uh, they used a GPS. They were trying to get to Hemlock, Michigan. They ended up in Hubbard, Michigan. You know, it uh, can kind of get kind of a challenge sometimes when we're u trying to find our way. I imagine all of us can recall those kind of trips where our journey ended up in the wrong place. There are times when we take a trip and realize we're not prepared for the journey. Maybe we uh, didn't have adequate clothing. Back when my wife and I were celebrating our 20th anniversary, I had my kids help me to do a secret trip so I had my daughters pack a suitcase for her and push it out the window, you know, pull the screen up, push it out the window. And I snuck up, got the bag, uh, uh, the suitcase, and we went to the trunk and snuck it in. And then I said, well, Elaine, how about we just go someplace for, to a restaurant for our anniversary? Well, we ended up in Lansing, Michigan at a motel. And uh, we had our nice meal, only to find that my daughters didn't adequately pack the clothes that she needed 
to uh, have an enjoyable time. Also, there are times when we go on, on a trip and we don't have adequate gas. And especially this day and age, it seems like we could easily do that. I remember some years ago, I was going to a district meeting over in Port Huron, Michigan, and I thought I had more than enough gas, but about uh, 10 miles out, I ran out. Sometimes we, we go and we just realize we just don't have uh, what's essential for the trip. That possibly is what the disciples felt as they were following Jesus. They didn't know where they were going with him. They often felt unprepared for the journey. But yet, back in Mark chapter 3, verse 13, it reads, Jesus went up on a mountain, called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. And verse 14 goes on to say, And he appointed twelve, designating them, apostles that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach to have authority to drive out demons these apostles followed jesus not knowing where he was going didn't didn't really know how to be prepared for the journey just wondering what's the next step where do we go from here and as we've seen in the portion of Scripture, they were out ministering and, and literally wore themselves out, didn't even have time to eat because they were busy helping Jesus with healing people and uh, organizing things for him. But yet they followed Jesus. They needed some rest. They needed some food. So they went to a solitary place. And there they tried to find the provisions they needed for food and so forth. And while they were there, a crowd of people came. Thousands of people came and gathered around. And Jesus had compassion on, on the people. And this is where the story begins in our study. Because you see, this was a great miracle of feeding 5,000 people or more. And it's such a significant study, such a significant miracle, that in fact it is written about in all four Gospels. It's the only miracle in the Bible that's recorded in all four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's commonly called the miracle of feeding the 5,000. But as Matthew writes in chapter 14, verse 21, there were 5,000 men besides women and children who experienced this miracle. So there could have been upwards to 10,000 people fed that day by five loaves of bread and two fish that Jesus had blessed. It was a famous miracle because so many people experienced it and saw it. But Jesus didn't do miracles just to show off his power. But he always did miracles to meet needs and to teach people principles of faith for their journey. Principles of faith for their journey. And today we stand at the beginning of this new year. And like the disciples and the people that day, we want to prepare for our journey into the new year. We want to prepare to live by faith in the new year. Amen? Amen? Come on. So let's notice some faith principles from this miracle that the disciples learned to prepare them for their journey with Jesus into the days ahead. And may we also learn those principles and the first principle that they learned is that faith calls us to admit, to admit to our need in the days ahead. We need to learn to admit to our need in the days ahead. If you look at chat verses 34 through 37 of Mark chapter 6, you'll see it tells us a large crowd had come 
and met with Jesus out, uh, on, the, on the shore, and he had compassion on them. So how did he meet them? How did he help them when he had compassion on them? He taught them. He taught them principles that they needed to know. And though he and his disciples were tired and weary, Jesus still needed to care for these people who had gathered, and so he teaches them. But as he taught them, it got late in the day, so the disciples, realizing they were in a remote place, encouraged Jesus to send them away so that they could find something to eat in the nearby towns and villages. But if you look at verse 37, Jesus answered, you give them something to eat to his disciples. And they said, well, that would take eight months of wages to pay for all that food that would be required to feed those people. Should we spend that much on bread and give it to them? Now, just let's kind of bring it up to modern day. Eight months of wages, the average income for a person working today in America is $6,200 a month. Multiply that by eight months, and that comes to $49,600. And so Jesus was saying to them, okay, feed them. And for about $50,000, you can meet that need. But the disciples are realizing, boy, we... How do we do that? How do we feed them? How do we provide for them? And what we have here is a challenge of faith for the disciples. The challenge was to understand the compassion Jesus had for these people. And to understand that God wants to meet needs, their needs, the disciples' needs. This challenge caused a problem. We have a large crowd in the thought in the literally thousands of people. And look around. There's no McDonald's. There's no Subway. There's no Burger King. What are we going to do? What are we supposed to do to meet them? He's telling us to feed them, and we, there's no place to feed them with. The beginning point is they had to admit they had a need. They had to admit they had a need. If I'm going to see God work, I need a faith that says, I can't do it. I can't feed all these people. I can't solve their problem, the problem that we have in front of us. Admit to God, I have a need. If I want to see God work in my life, if I want to see God work in this church, if I want to see God work in the lives of other people, in this coming year, I have to admit I have a need. God, I need your help. Amen? I need to admit I have a need. For many of us, this is very difficult. We don't like to admit we have a problem. We like to act like we have it all together, everything under control. We will hide our problems. We will cover them up. We will blame others for our problems. But the first principle we need as we face the journey into the new year in the coming days is we need to learn God does not work in our situation until we ask him. God does not work in our situation till we ask him, till we admit we have a need. He does not move to redeem us unless we confess our sin and ask him to come in. To our life. He does not answer our prayers 
unless we pray, we ask him. In fact, over 20 times in the New Testament, we're commanded to ask. To ask God. So we are called by faith to ask, as Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. So why not? Let's begin that today. As we face this new year, let's ask him. Let's call upon him. We have a need. The more ready we're ad, uh, we are to admit we need God on our journey this year, the more quickly you will find your faith will be strengthened. And more likely, you will find God working in the journey of your life this year, if we will ask. You want to see God work in this church? Have you asked him? Are you praying? Oh God, let your kingdom come. Your will be done in the earth, in the church, in my life. I need you, God. Admit your need. But you know, that's the problem. We try to handle our problems without recognizing God, that he is with us and that he's working. We fret, we worry, rather than admit and to trust. And yet the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. Or as Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 says, Be anxious for nothing. But in all things, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. That's what these disciples did. They said, how are we going to pay for all these people to eat? Can you imagine the expense? Why... Eight months of wages to pay for it? Soon their anxiety began to kick in, to overdrive. Well, okay, even if we buy it, how are we going to transport all that bread here to all these, this great crowd? And why didn't Jesus come to land at a city somewhere where we would have more access to food? And how are we going to keep the bread from getting stale or getting, having bugs get in it and ruin it? And who's going to do the cleanup after this picnic anyway? Isn't that about the way we talk sometimes? God, I know you want us to do this, but boy, look at all the problems. Look at all the situations. We can't solve this. We can't do it. And that's what they had forgotten who was there with them. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was standing right there in front of them. They had already seen him do some miracles, turn water to wine, healing people who was hopelessly diseased. Jesus, who's able to turn stone into bread, is standing there, and yet they're looking for a KFC. Or maybe a Burger King. But that's the problem. We try to solve our problems and worry instead of trust. Instead of asking. We've noticed this past Christmas season the word Emmanuel. God with us. We need him with us as we go through the journey of the year ahead. And we need to take time 
to ask, to admit we have a need. And that leads us to the second thought, and that is this, that the second principle to help us prepare for the journey with Jesus is that faith calls us to assess our ability in the days ahead. Assess our ability. Look at verse 38. Jesus says, well, how many uh, loaves do you have? Go and see. When they found out, they said, five small loaves, two fishes. Jesus called them to assess what they had to work with. What do you have to work with? In the year ahead, what do you have that you're working with in your personality, in your situation? What does this church have to work with in the days ahead? Why did Jesus ask them to assess what they had, their ability? After all, he is God. He he could have called down the manna from heaven like he did for Moses and fed the whole crowd without another thought. Remember, the first principle is to admit your need. The second principle, you need to assess your ability. Verse 36 says, Jesus said, you give them something to eat. You feed them. How would you like to have been one of those disciples when Jesus said to you, okay, you feed this 10,000 people. (laughs) You're standing there. Lord, look, look at all these people. They're all hungry. He says to you, okay, you take care of the problem. You feed them. All we've got is five little muffin-sized pieces, uh, loaves of bread, barley bread, and two fish. I mean, that won't even feed the disciples, let alone all those people. What are we supposed to do? Why does he... Why does he ask you to do the impossible? Because he wants to stretch your faith. Why does he ask us to do things we think we can't do? He wants to stretch our faith. Why is he asking this church to go forward by faith? He's trying to stretch us as a church. Jesus obviously knew these people knew the problem. In fact, in John chapter 6, verse 6 of the same story, Jesus asked them only to test them, for he had already had in mind what he was going to do. He was asking them, okay, what do you have? What do you have to work with? He already knew he was going to feed those thousands of people but he wanted to test their faith, strengthen their faith, stretch their faith. Jesus asked them to do the impossible, to teach them, to put their trust in him. You may feel like you don't have the ability to do what God wants you to do, but I'm here to tell you today, if God asks you to do it, he will give you the ability to do it, even though you feel like you don't have the ability. Amen? Had you known me as a boy, number one, I only went to Sunday school. I never went to morning church worship. And for me to get up in front of people, my nerves would be so bad, I would shake like crazy. But one day, and when I went to college, God called me to be a preacher. And I thought, oh my goodness, I can't do this. But over the years, God enabled me to do the ministry. And I'm here to tell you today, you may look at your abilities, you may assess your ability and say, I can't do it. But God will give you the ability to do whatever he asks you to do. Amen? In your journey into the year ahead, 
you are going to face some impossible challenges. A crisis in your family. A crisis in your work. A crisis in your school. Remember, God has permitted you to face it so that you can realize maybe you can handle it, your inability, but also to realize he has the ability to meet your need. When I went to Zambia, Africa in 2009, I realized that those people are some of the poorest people in the world. Their income on a day was possibly $2. $2 to live on. And yet, when I was with those people, I realized that, that their <clears throat> earthly resources were not able to meet their needs. And yet, I saw in them a great joy, a great rejoicing, because it caused them to know God would meet their needs. They trusted God. Let me ask you, as you assess your ability, are you trusting God to give you the ability that you don't have? The disciples didn't have the ability to feed 10,000 people or 5,000 people plus men and women, uh, women and children, yet God gave them what they needed. And that leads us to the third thought that we want to think about in relationship to principles to prepare us for the journey in the days ahead. And that is that faith calls us to act on God's message for the days ahead. Act on God's message in the days ahead. If you go to the book of John, chapter 6, it tells us that the disciples, this is the same story, excuse me. <clears throat> this is the same story that Mark records. John writes it from his personality as the Holy Spirit inspires him. It tells us that the disciple, Andrew, found a little boy in the crowd with a sack lunch, if you will. And he's the one who had the five loaves and the two fish that his mother prepared, no doubt, for him to go to watch Jesus give his message. <clears throat> the disciples were told by Jesus to go out into the crowd and to organize the group into 50s and 100s. And then he told them, uh, go find out what, do you got, what we have here. And so here's the disciples. You can kind of see them walking around. Anybody got any food here? Anybody got anything here that, we, that they're willing to share? Everybody's kind of just looking around. Oh, I hope somebody's got a hamburger. I hope somebody's got something. Finally, they come to a little boy, and he raises his hand. What do you got, boy? Oh, I've got, my mom sent me with some barley bread. How much? Well, I've got five little loaves of barley bread, and I got two fish. Stop there for a moment. One of the things that happened in that moment is that the disciples obeyed the message of Christ went out and looked for that food that was there. And it's still today that as you and I, as followers of Christ, obey God's word, God can use us to meet needs, to be alert to the voice and to the message of God. What if the disciples had decided? What if the disciples had decided, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. There's too many people. I don't feel like it. I'm tired. I'm hot. I'm hungry. And I'm just, uh, Jesus, thanks for the word, but I'm not going to go out in that crowd and beg for food. Not me. Nope. Maybe, maybe somebody went up to that boy, and his name was Andrew, who went to that boy, 
And he said, I'm going to go. Jesus said for us to go. And so the disciples went. They obeyed the message. They found a little boy with a meal. And by finding that boy with a meal, God was able, through Christ, to bless that food and feed the thousands because disciples did what they were told to do. And it's still today, if you and I are going to face this year, we are going to need to obey the Word of God, the message of God. If He asks you to do something, do it. If He asks you to, to pray, pray. If He asks you to serve, serve. Whatever He asks you to do, do it. For you never know what kind of miracle may happen because you follow and obey God's message. Amen? Now think about that. This little boy, I don't know how old he was. I guess maybe he was nine for a number. It could have been 11, could have been six. But think about this little boy. Andrew comes, says, let's call him, uh, let's call him Joe. Joe, I want you to come up here with your lunch. Jesus wants it. Oh, okay. And he brings his lunch to Jesus. And Jesus smiles at the boy. And then he begins to take the bread. And he blesses it. And he blesses the fish. And all of a sudden, Jesus starts breaking the bread and handing it out to the disciples. He takes that one little loaf and he breaks it and 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 breaks it, handing it out to the disciples. And the disciples go out and start handing it out to the people. And he keeps breaking the bread and he keeps handing it out and the fish. And he takes the fish and he breaks it and feeds it and passes it. And hey, pass on a little bit more. And on it goes. Thousands of people. Now, what do you think that little boy was experiencing as he chewed on his part of that picnic? He's thinking, wow, I got to be used by God to feed all these people. You know what the disciples may be thinking? Wow, because I was used by God to find that little boy, all these people have been fed. I tell you that story because you see, when people obey and follow the word of God, the message of God, miracles happen, blessings happen, unexpected ways, and people are blessed. A little boy was blessed because he got to be used by God to meet the needs of other people because the disciples did what Jesus said. Wow. Wow. God help us in this coming year to be alert to the message of God, what God is speaking to us, because he may use you and you and you and me to bless somebody else who will then bless many others. And that's the beauty of the work of faith. As we follow God's message, God can bless and use it. And that leads us to the final thought that we'd like to share this morning, and that is simply this. If we're going to see God work in our midst, if we're going to be prepared for the journey in the days ahead, we need to, again, remember to admit to our need, assess our ability, act on God's message, and then anticipate God to bless in the days ahead. Look at verse 42. It just simply says, they all ate and were satisfied. I expect God to bless and multiply what I give him. I may take a step of faith and give extra in my offering, but I expect God will bless it. I may do some extra praying, but I expect God to bless it. 
I may be uh, taking on a new ministry in the church, but I can expect God to bless it. Whatever you give to God, he will multiply and bless it and do miracles through it because you have followed his leadership in the days ahead. And how much was the blessing? Not only did thousands of people get fed, but you also see by this portion, then after all that, they were able to pick up 12 basketful of food, of bread and fish. Wow. What could God do with you? What could God do with me if we will live by that kind of faith? We may say, well, that, that was back then. That was an impossible possibility. But Jesus said in Mark chapter 10, verse 27, he looked at his disciples and said, with men this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Whatever you're looking at this year that seems to be impossible, remember God has power to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you ask or think. God can bless what we give him. God can bless our lives and use us if we will walk by faith in the coming year. But you can also expect four things to happen on your journey of faith in the coming days. You can expect to see some miracles if you walk by faith and live by faith. You can also expect to grow spiritually as you walk by faith. You will have a new sense of godliness and the way of God's will and God's work in your life as you walk by faith. You can also be expecting to be hassled by Satan. He's going to bug you. (laughs) He's going to rattle your cage, if you will. He's going to tempt you. He's going to try to oppress you. But yet God is greater as you walk by faith and trust in him. And you can also expect to experience joy. The joy of knowing you're following the Savior. The joy of knowing that God can use you and bless you and work through you if you will walk by faith in the coming days. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. Shall we stand? Let's bow for prayer, and just before we pray, I would like to challenge you. What needs do you have? Admit them to God just now. What abilities do you have? What resources do you have? Trust God to give you what you need in the days ahead. Also remember that God wants to work as you listen to the message of the Lord to you. What is God saying to you these days how about committing to reading the Bible more acting on what you learn and watch how God can bless because you do and then also recognize that God wants to bless your life in the year ahead as you walk by faith trusting him Lord, this morning as we close this service, we pray in the name of Jesus just now. You will help us all to cast all our cares upon you, for you care for us.
We believe you can meet the needs of our life because we ask. Ask anything in my name and I will do it that the Father be glorified in the Son, Jesus said. So we ask, meet the needs. Meet the needs. We think of baby Gilead. Please, Lord, meet the need there. Heal him. You know the other sicknesses and problems. You know the needs of our church. Meet the needs, we pray. We can't do it. We're so limited in our abilities. But you're so able to do exceedingly more than we can even ask. As Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things that you did not know. So, Lord, we call on you to show us new things. Father, help us to be alert to your voice. Help us to give ourselves to reading the word of God and to learn and to listen to your spirit speak to us so that we can bless people and you, help people to be used by you for your kingdom. Oh God, help us as a church to be alert to your voice, to your spirit, to your word. And Lord, we're just trusting you to bless our lives in the days ahead, to multiply and provide. And for all that you do, we will thank you in Jesus' name. And all the people said, amen. Thanks for being with us.